and warrants an early radical cystectomy. The clinician can choose to evaluate the prostatic urethra in male and the proximal urethra in female. In men, during TRBT, if one suspects that the patient has muscle invasive bladder cancer or for that matter non-muscle invasive bladder cancer that is extensive and warrants an early radical cystectomy, the clinician can choose to evaluate the prostatic urethra in male and the proximal urethra in female. Talking about urethral evaluation in male at the time of TRBT, what do we want to see? We want to see involvement of the prostatic mucosa, its ducts or the stromal involvement. How do we do it? At the time of TRBT, you can resect deeply the prostate from the bladder neck to the verumontinum at 5 and 7 o'clock position by transurethral resection using a loop. Here I want to stress that options telling cold cup biopsy of the prostate as means of evaluation of prostatic urethra is not to be used as it cannot resect deeply so that adequate sample necessary for evaluation is not obtained by cold cup biopsy alone. So, a transurethral resection using a resectoscope loop cutting from the bladder neck to the verumontinum at 5 and 7 o'clock position is required for assessment of prostatic urethral mucosa, acini and ducts as well as stromal involvement. Clinicians can also choose to evaluate the urethra during the radical cystectomy and at this time after cystoprostatectomy has been done the urethra at the prostatic side is resected and sent for frozen section to evaluate for prostatic apical margin. I hope this is clear. So, during TRBT, you take biopsies from the prostatic urethra up to the verumontinum, whereas during radical cystectomy, after resection of the prostate, the prostatical apical mucosa urethra is sent for evaluation. What is the clinical importance of urethral involvement in patients of bladder cancer? That is, there is increased risk of urethral recurrence in the residual urethra that is left after cystectomy, which I had marked a part of the membranous urethra and the rest of the anterior urethra after radical cystectomy. The MCQ we asked is the overall risk is usually 4 to 8 percent. It varies with the degree of prostatic involvement such that it has been reported in 18 to 30 percent patients who had prostatic stromal involvement as compared to 12 percent in patients who had carcinoma in C2 or ductal involvement. You must remember 4 to 8 percent and that stromal involvement has higher risk of urethral recurrence to the tune of 30 percent as compared to 12 percent when it is localized as CIS or ductal involvement. Second clinical importance is that stromal involvement of the prostate is associated with high rates of nodal positivity that means the disease has higher chances of being locally advanced. There are two types of stromal involvement seen in bladder cancer. The first common type is extension of the bladder tumor via the prostatic urethral mucosa into the stroma. So, you have the bladder, the prostatic urethra and the prostate. The first step or the first method is that the growth extends from the mucosa into the prostatic stroma which has a good better prognosis as compared to the second type in which the disease spreads outside the bladder to involve the prostate from outside in. Although both are classified as T4A. Finally, Earlier practices recommended that complete urethrectomy, total urethrectomy be performed in patients who have diffuse carcinoma in C2, ductal or acinary involvement of the prostate or stromal involvement. This was earlier practice. In what patients will you suspect 
to evaluate the prostate urethra at the time of TURBT. There have been a few risk factors in the order of importance or priority. Tumors involving the bladder neck have higher propensity to involve the prostatic urethra. Multifocality is another risk factor which is a property of carcinoma in C2. And finally, the presence of CIS has been shown to be a risk factor in few studies whereas other studies have uh, negated this possibility. So if asked, they should be answered in this priority with this being strong and this being lesser important factors for suspecting prostatic urethral involvement. So what is done is here a cystoscopic view can be seen. This is the impression of the veru montanum. This is the right prostatic lobe, this is the left prostatic lobe and this is the floor that we are talking about in the in this region and somewhere here would be the bladder neck. Taking the loop, we take deep resections. So always remember these have to be deep resections and that is why a transurethral resection using a loop have to be done for assessment of prostatic urethra and not use of cold cup. These are sent for biopsy where the pathologist will report on involvement if any. If involvement is present, they will signify carcinoma in C2, prostatic ductal, acinar or stomal, stomal involvement. It was seen that when prostatic urethral biopsy was taken at the time of TURBT and it was positive, in about one third patients, the final urethral margin taken from the prostatic apex is negative. That means in one third patients, although prostatic urethral biopsy was positive, the final margin was negative. When the negative predictive value was evaluated, it was found that prostatic urethral biopsy at the time of TURBT had a negative predictive value of 99.4%, whereas intraoperative frozen section had an cent percent, hundred percent negative predictive value at frozen section. So, what are the current practices? First of all, if a, uh, the clinician chooses to evaluate the urethra at the time of TURBT, suspecting it because of bladder neck involvement, multifocality of the tumor or presence of CIS in the bladder. If you find a low grade tumor in the prostatic urethra, you resect that tumor and can retain that urethra. If prostatic stomal involvement is seen, as I said, First of all, it is poor prognosis because it is associated with high incidence of nodal positivity and in such patients, new adjuvant chemotherapy is recommended to be given prior to radical cystectomy. If there is diffuse involvement of the prostatic urethra in the ducts by carcinoma in C2, urethrectomy is indicated. Even in patients in whom you find positive urethral uh, involvement at the time of TURBT, Intraoperative frozen section should be performed in all individuals. As I said, in one third patients who had prostatic urethral involvement at the time of TRBT, their final margin at cystectomy was negative. So, just on the basis of prostatic urethral involvement of TRBT, you cannot say that we will not perform neobladder because your urethra is at a higher risk of recurrence. You reassess at the time of radical cystectomy with the intraoperative frozen section. And if that is positive, you will defer neobladder and urethrectomy is indicated. But if it is negative, you can go ahead with neobladder formation because the negative predictive value of a frozen section with a final histopathological section is almost 100%. In patients with prosthetic stomal involvement, the patient should be counseled that your prostatic stoma is involved and you have high risk of urethral recurrences. But if the patient insists for a neobladder, prostatic stomal involvement is not an absolute contraindication for neobladder formation. And in such individuals who refuse uh, to uh, opt for urethrectomy and uh, conduit diversion and insist on neobladder in, with prostatic stomal involvement, you need to monitor the remnant urethra for recurrence with cytology and urethroscopy. So, I will make it very clear. <clears throat> Prostatic stromal involvement is not an absolute contraindication for neobladder. The only absolute contraindication in relation to urethral findings for a neobladder is a positive urethral 
apical margin at the time of rose insection. When we talk about the assessment of proximal urethra in female, concomitant urethral involvement with bladder cancer is seen in 2 to 12 percent cases. This is concomitant and not the figure of recurrence. In men, recurrence in the urethra was seen in 4 to 8, 8 percent patients. This is concomitant urethral involvement in female is seen in 2 to 12 percent. It involves the proximal urethra. How do you evaluate you to a bladder neck biopsy at the time of TURBT or an intraoperative frozen section at radical cystectomy? These are the two methods. Again, the importance is there is increased risk of urethral recurrence and cannot offer neobladder if the urethra is involved. What are the pointers or risk factors that you must keep in mind predicting that urethra, uh, the risk of urethral recurrence in women is high and this is an important MCQ which is asked. The most important is involvement of the bladder neck on TURBT. It is seen that 60% that despite bladder neck involvement being a high or an important factor, 60% of such females will still not have urethral involvement on final biopsy. The second is involvement of the anterior vaginal wall. When the anterior vaginal wall is involved, 100% of these women were seen to have bladder neck involvement and only 50% had urethral involvement. If a female patient with bladder cancer presents to you with inguinal lymphadenopathy, it is an indirect indicator for you to evaluate for urethral involvement because the drainage of the urethra in females will go to the inguinal region. In such patients, current recommendation is you perform an intraoperative frozen section and if it is involved, you will perform complete urethrectomy in women and not offer a new bladder. And the actual risk of urethral recurrence in women with new bladder is 1% after orthotopic new bladder. I would like to emphasize one more important point here. Even in individuals in whom the urethra has been deemed to be at high risk of recurrence, such as men with bladder neck involvement, multifocality of CIS, or women with bladder neck tumor, anterior vaginal wall involvement, suppose it has been done, and in patients, in these patients, we have divided them into two groups, those who have undergone orthotopic neobladder and those who have undergone an ileal condu or a condu diversion. It is seen that in patients who are at high risk of urethral recurrence, those undergoing orthotopic neobladder still have lower recurrences as compared to those with condu diversion. And in this regard, the some properties of the urine in prevention of urethral recurrences have been stressed upon. This is sometimes asked as an MCQ, that orthotopic neobladder itself is a protective factor in reducing urethral recurrence after radical cystectomy. So remember this point. <laughs>